He was born in Paris, 1699, uh, came from a, not an exactly an artistic family, had to fight very hard to be accepted as a painter and succeeded brilliantly in 728 through a picture which is here called uh, La Ré, which uh, introduced him, uh, gave him the entry to the French Academy, Academy Royale de Peinture and Sculpture, which was an event for him. And uh, from then on, in a certain way, he was accepted by the official painters. <laughs> he was very much accepted by, and admired by them and collected by them. So this date of 28, which is, he was 29 years old, not so young in anymore for a painter of the 18th century, is a crucial moment and the picture is a crucial event in his career. From this, from this moment on, what he tried to do, and you will follow this clearly in the exhibition, is to, on one hand to, pay, to paint still lives with animals, with objects, with rabbits, a lot of rabbits in his work, and a lot of objects, small objects that he tries to increase in size, or as reverse, big objects that he tries to miniaturize later on, or to paint uh, objects of, of the everyday life, objects he would like, we look, would look at them in finding them beautiful, and not, do, not to think of them as objects, uh, uh, vulgar objects of the kitchen, to, but in a certain way to prove that these everyday objects are great and beautiful. And he, he tried in a certain way to, uh, to, to never to repeat himself. He did of the same composition two or three times the same picture, but he never tried to, he, there is a real evolution of his conception of art, and I suggest to the visitor of the exhibition to look at a rabbit of the beginnings of the 30s and a rabbit of the late years, of the late 50s, to see how in a certain way his approach of a dead animal is changing, and how what is a little bit nat naturalistic in the beginning, which he tries to key to, to, uh, to paint uh, very precisely uh, how a rabbit was looking, at the end becomes something more sublime, more stylized, 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 and more in a certain way uh, abstract in a way. And he was very, in a way, uh, very uh, acute about it. it he had the chance of guiding a great writer, Diderot. And I think in a certain way he opened the eyes on, of Diderot on what painting should be. That means uh, the quality of a brushwork, the beauty of a brushwork, and what a pa pa painter can do with his brushes. That means express ideas that others are expressing or through music or through words. And this, he was very good on such a thing. And there is this very famous late quotation where a painter spoke about his brilliant technique, uh, of, he was very proud of how he did the picture, and Chardin was a little bit uh, hurt, and he was not very happy. And he, at the end, it, uh, he, he said, uh, who told you that you want paints with colors? And the other was very shocked, was, what should you paint? One does not paint with colors, one paints with sentiments. And I mean, this is in a certain way true. Chardin has always painted with sentiments, and as I said before, he is a painter of peace, of silence. There is a great quality of silence. How does one paint silence? How does one paint silence? There are painters very good in painting. Uh, um, uh, I mean, Picasso is the reverse of a painter of silence. There's violence in his works, and when he hears the picture with Chardin, it's reverse. It's peace, uh, it's silence, it's quietness, and, uh, yes. and it's for the possibility of forgetting the everyday life and looking at this picture and the possibility of dreaming and uh, of escaping of, uh, of the world of everyday life. Uh, he is a, a perfect painter, not of, uh, he's a perfect painter of boys, but especially of adolescents, not of uh, uh, older persons. He, he, he understands the children perfectly well. He has entered the world of children as Rousseau did in the same century in a certain way. Uh, all of this in a certain way is very much 18th century and on this end he's a quite a very modern painter and it's not without any reason that the Cubists uh, were inspired by him so strongly. It's not without any reason that of course uh, Picasso owned uh, Chardin and, and so on. I mean he's a painter for painter because painters are trying, all of them, the most abstract one, the most figurative one, to, to, to achieve what he, that, that, what he achieved to do. That means paint sentiments, to go back to what I said before, with brushes. It's not, it seems so easy to do, it's so difficult to, to, success, to do successfully. <laughs>